when I hit the hospital, uh, I was probably very close to bleeding to death, uh, and not only did I have a severe spinal cord injury, but I had a chest injury that oftentimes is in and of itself fatal. The things that were done to me and for me were exactly the things that needed to be done. And uh, I'm sitting here thinking about it and talking about it today uh, because I was fortunate. Fortunate to be a mile from the hospital, fortunate to be in this valley, and fortunate to have the intensive care unit staff that I did taking care of me. It was hard. It was hard on everybody because I got operated on in the same room as a patient that was originally set up for me as a surgeon. And so it was hard on the operating room staff and it was hard on the nurses. Um, but they did a great job. They, uh, they, they just did what they needed to do. Well, I've learned that uh, as a patient and as a critically ill patient, you lose all sense of control. And the reality of the situation is that your life can be dependent on the people who are willing and capable of taking care of you. For me, the, the reality has been the despair over the life I've lost. Um, and that's been much stronger than anger. Um, and despair and grief and grieving, I mean, that's part of life. You know, one of the things that comes right at you like a freight train is that we're going to die. Each and every one of us is going to die. And we're all going to go through a, some kind of a dying process. It may, be, it may be as quick as a heart attack or a bad accident, or it may be longer and drawn out, but it's still a path that we're all going to take. And, 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 you know, it's, there's a big plan in place here, and, and you don't want to think that he had to have this horrible thing happen to him to have it roll into position, but we'll never know the waves that have come off this. And who knows what he's going to do in the next 20 to 30 years. He would have been doing wonderful things anyway. It's been a huge loss to this community. There were a lot of people waiting to have their backs taken care of by him that won't get that now but they may get something else from him that is more valuable than the surgery that he would have done. Yeah. People that get through things like this are real survivors. They've, been, they've really been kicked and they've gotten back up. So. I feel like I have to lay the foundation, which means, it really means having, being home, not being in an institution, having the right equipment, my wife has been a godsend. She's a 24-hour nurse, and she never thought she was signing on for that. And, and so you have to have the right people around you. And, and then you have to have all of that come together to get the right routine. And right now, I would have to say, we're building the foundation, and I can't imagine not working. I can't imagine not being part of the medical community and not being part of the community in terms of continuing to work for bicycle safety and some of those things. I uh, felt pretty comfortable going into my office the other day and so I, I, think, I, I think that it's very likely that I'll be working back at the same place but in a different capacity than a surgeon. There we go. This is basically a handicap remodel of what was a garage and a small mother-in-law apartment. And um, the, as you can see, um, 
everything is cut down to size. Um, everything is made so that it's reachable from in a wheelchair, uh, because that's the reality of life right now. And um, over here is my working desk, which also has a lower height set for this wheelchair so that I can roll up underneath it and uh, get to the computer station. Eventually I'll be able to uh, go through an alleyway and get into the house, but right now for me to get into the house does require a trip outside and up a ramp. So it's a little bit isolated right now, but it's a space to come home to and a lot of people in my condition don't have a space to come home to when they come home. I'm hoping that I can see the opportunity in not being dead. And that's, yeah, that's, that's the thing that, uh, yet, yet. Um, so there's, there's life to be lived and it's life that I would not have had. Um, so as awful as it is to have 80% of your body not working, the 20% that works is, is still engaged. And uh, it's a pretty important 20% that, 